Hi, it's Ryan, and I'm here with an After You've Read Book discussion. Basically, after you've read this book, we can all talk about it and not be afraid of spoilers, because reviews are to not be spoiled, and discussions are filled with spoilers. Today we're going to be talking about Swamplandia, which is an awesome 2011 book by Karen Russell. It was a shortlisted, well, one of three for the Pulitzer Prize, if there would have been a Pulitzer Prize awarded in fiction. The way After You've Read works, or is going to work from here on out, is that I'll have about four or five kind of talking points, and I'll just go off of those talking points, but basically have it limited to four or five different discussion points, so that the videos can be short and enjoyable, and so that it's kind of precise in what we're really talking about, or what I'm really talking about, and hopefully that you'll be responding to. The first one is an inspiring line of prose, and <laughs> for those of us who like quotes and such, and I know that's not everyone, there always are these really succinct, really beautiful lines that kind of summarize everything, or summarize an idea very nicely, and it's really fun to put that on Tumblr or just live by it or whatever. And my favorite one actually comes from the acknowledgments section, and as you see more of these, hopefully, you'll learn that I like odd things such as like the dedication and the acknowledgments. But my favorite one, and I'll read it to you, is on the acknowledgments, so if you have a copy, it's, um, During the years that I spent lost in the swamp, sometimes the only thing that kept me pushing forward was the thought of making it to this acknowledgments page. And I think that, I don't know, <laughs> I just nerded out there, but I think that's such a really cool, nice, beautiful sentence, just like, that really summarizes kind of everything. Especially when I read it, I was just thinking about how I was going to write this goodbye column for the newspaper. Anyways, and, um, because I graduated, and I've been thinking about it since, like, February, January, maybe since my freshman year. <laughs> I could understand her with this, like, throughout the, my time working there or in college in general. What it kept me going was the fact that I'd be able to reflect on it, and I think that's really cool that she has that same feeling and put it in this book that I love so much. Topic 2 is favorite chapter or scene. Scene's probably broader than chapter. Chapter 20, Out to Sea, is a really nice chapter, and I'm pretty sure it may not be, but I think it's the name of one of Karen Russell's short stories, which is in her book, St. Lucy's Home for Children Raised by Wolves, which I haven't read and I'd love to read. I was looking forward to getting to that particular um, setting in the book because I knew that it was one of her short stories, so I figured that she would use it in this book as a setting. And I think in my head the idea of this retirement home that's like on water and kind of like yacht, maybe they live in, they don't live in yachts I guess, but the way that I have it pictured in my head is kind of funny and like with Karen Russell it's like hauntingly funny. I think she does a really good job with what goes down at, in this chapter with the fight between Kiwi and Grandpa Sawtooth and just where it is, you know, this retirement home that's called Out to Sea which is so perfect and it's just... It's so Florida, and it really gets her setting, and I think she did a fantastic job. I love that chapter. And it's not as heavy as- it is heavy because it's Karen Russell, right? So it's always gonna have this, like, heavy, forlorn feel to it, but it's still- it's still really good, and I don't know, it's so everything. It's all of those adjectives. Topic number three is going to be comments in the narration. It's really just Ava's point of view for a few chapters, and then when Kiwi moves away, of course, we get the back and forth. Even though we kind of have Kiwi's point of view, it's not his narration, so you hear Ava's voice and you hear the third person omniscient voice. Obviously, it's still a book kind of like narrated by 12 year old Ava response or critical response or discussion or whatever you want to call it. I wanted to specifically talk about the rape scene in this book and how that kind of threw me off guard ish. When we get introduced to Birdman, okay, I, I think that he's maniacal and that something bad's going to happen to Ava, but I didn't really know Karen Russell's style because it doesn't really pivot around the rape, it pivots around kind of the mystery, the family struggle and Ava's struggle, and um, just her dad, everything you learn about the chief at the end, and kind of Kiwi, and everyone's just misconceptions of each other. Like, the, bi the big web of miscommunication and misconceptions they all have of each other, and what's, like, really going on. And I thought that was going to be the, the novel, and I didn't know we'd have this little scene where it, like, pivots on her rape, and then, like, okay, and then what does she do? Because she's in the middle of South Florida, in the swamp, with this man who just raped her. I think that's definitely the youngest person in literature I've ever read either being raped or, like, discussing their rape, um, as in TV and all the other stuff. I'm pretty sure a 12-year-old is the youngest, so it was just, like, really hard to 
to kind of grasp that that's where the book was heading toward to a certain degree. I would just like to know what your interpretations of it were, and if they align with mine, kind of, you know, the book was drawing to it and then pivoted from it, or, and it kept you reading, or if it maybe turned you off from reading the book, if maybe that kind of, like, you weren't really feeling it and then that made it kind of worse. Just let me know. That was it for my first After You Read video. Bye guys!